Now then, it's been more than 25 years since he first made his name in British cult classic with Nell and I. And since then, Richard E. Grant has become a much-loved fixture on our screens. Well, it's only during the past year uh, and a half that he's faced the biggest challenge of all following the sad loss of his wife, Joan, in 2021. Well, to deal with his grief and to honour his promise to Joan to find a pocket full of happiness in each day, lifelong diary keeper Richard has turned his daily journal entries into a book and he joins us now to explain it. And there is the book there, out now in paperback. And it's lovely, as always, to have you here. You. Um, you have written books before about your life, the limelight, those showbiz stories, but this is an entirely different book. This is much more personal and, and important, I'd say. Yeah, well, I'd, uh, when I knew that my wife was diagnosed with terminal cancer mm -hmm. on her birthday, um, on the 21st of December 2021, 20, uh, I thought that uh, I'm a lifelong diary keeper, but that I wanted as forensically detailed um, whatever time we had left together. Yeah. So that is the basis of what this book is. And then it jumps backwards and forwards in time of how we first met and going through the Oscars and our combined career. So mm. is, it, is it so detailed because you... Because there wasn't an idea. I think you were quite reticent at publishing it at first, weren't was, you? So yeah. it, you were writing this down so that you could remember for you? Yes, and the other thing is that when when somebody's diagnosed terminally, you can't, you have no control. So the one thing that I had is at the end of every day, I could, I wrote down everything that happened, and weirdly, that it felt like somehow that was a way of controlling something that is uncontrollable. Yeah, there's no doubt that that journaling helped you, and then eventually, when you made that decision to share these stories with other people, there is absolutely no doubt that it has gone on to help other people and people connect with you and talk about this all the time. Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing because of social media, you get you get an instant response from, you know, it's not like you find out six months later mm. when, when the book is published and or I did this one man show about it. Um, it means that you get a very visceral and hands on immediate response mm. response to it. And I know that the, the way that it's connected with people and their sim similar situations that mm. people have been through, um, you don't feel alone, which is the worst part of, yeah. you know, after somebody dies. Well, you're, you're, just, you're you know, incredibly You only honest. hear your own footsteps in yeah. your house. Yeah. Oh. Um, I mean, you are, you are uh, very honest and very open on your Instagram, um, which is compelling often. Um, tell us about the pocket full of happiness. So when uh, Four days before Joan died, she said to my daughter and I, I know that you're going to be sad, but I charge you both to try and find a pocket full of happiness in each day. Mm. And it was became really a great mantra by which to navigate the abyss of grief that we've dealt with in the last 17 months. And every day we try and do that, not trying to think you've got to do something life changing, but just in the ordinary things mm. to find joy in that. And it's been really helpful. And has it been harder or easier than you thought? Like how, when you well, like when you're in grief, and that mm -hmm. must be so all-consuming. How easy is that to do? Uh, there, there are days, you know, yeah. it even happens now, all these months later, where you feel like you can't move, and then people, you know, tweet or uh, send you messages saying, you know, go for a walk, do this. But sometimes when it hits you like a tsunami, you feel incapable of doing anything. Yeah. And I now just accept that you've got to, you've just got to not not try and do anything at all, not even have a cup of tea or phone somebody. Yeah. You just have to... Let it happen that to you, in a way. Yeah. Mm. So what um, constitutes a, a pocket full of happiness? How have they manifested themselves? Uh, gardening has been an absolutely extraordinarily good thing and, you know, digging and replanting stuff and getting covered in mud. Yeah. Um, going for a run every day, you know, all these things. And uh, just small acts of kindness from people are something that you might take for granted, but when you're post-grief or in the dealing with grief, the kindness of people is something that really lifts you up in a way that I never take for granted at all now. I'm so grateful for it. Well, two people who were incredibly kind and are good friends of yours, and especially um, they were wonderful with Joan, actually, when she was very ill, was, uh -huh. is the king and our queen consort, Camilla. Yeah, just uh, a few weeks before she died, he said that... Um, contacted us and said, could he come around to see Joan because he knew it'd be the last time. So he brought mangoes and that she, he knew that she loved and uh, came and sat with her in our garden for about half an hour and they just talked about everything. Um, and, you know, it was a very kind thing to do when he's as busy 
yeah. a, a man as, as he is. And, and on the opposite side of that, you say that there are people who have essentially edited themselves out. Oh, yeah. I was in the south of France um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we've had a, a little converted farmhouse there for the last 35 years, and um, a Swedish couple that I've known for 25 years, I saw them as, as close as I'm sitting to you now, and as I was walking towards them, they were sitting in the cafe, I saw her nudge him, and then they both turned their heads oh, away. No. So what's that all about? I, I have no idea. I, I think I've, I've now found out from other people that this is not uncommon when, when people, they don't know how to deal with, with grief, so they just would rather... Avoid it. Avoid it, or cross the street. But that's why, that's why actually, your book's so important, because it, it allows people to have those conversations, doesn't yeah. it? It just does, because people are so useless at talking about death and yeah. passing and, and loss. And you also find out who your friends really yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Some people just can't can't deal with it. I mean, look what you two have been through. You, you suddenly realise that yeah. who the good and the bad are. That's definitely true. Well, one of the goodies is uh, Alison Hammond. Um, <laughs> and she's not just a pocket full of happiness, she's a whole coat full of she happiness. She really is, yeah. So, uh, so new. And that, how lovely to see you both together doing, doing the bathroom. Oh, we had a great time together, yeah. It was extraordinary. She's fun, isn't she? Yeah, she is. <laughs> because, you know, they didn't... Because I'm not a stand-up comedian and you're then licensed and expected to, as a host, to roast the audience. Um, I obviously couldn't do that. So because I've been so celebratory on my Oscar um, award circuit four years ago, they obviously wanted that and they said, that that's what we want you to bring to the BAFTAs. Yeah. Perfect person was to have me co-host with Alison. Oh, it was lovely. She's unstoppable. Yeah. She is. She is. Awesome nature. Nature. Um, and you're heading out on tour again, and this is something that you really love, isn't it? I mean, this must be like the ultimate moment to connect with your audience. Yeah, it's an amazing thing because um, the first half I, you know, talk and show um, photographs and video and stuff of my life together, and it's a way of um, what you were talking about earlier, where what happens in so often in grief is that people either avoid talking about the person that's died as though they've never existed. Yeah. So when people do talk about it, then you're so grateful. So in in my show, I'm able to talk about my life with Joan, and so she feels much more alive and present than, mm. than anything. And then in the second half, people use a QR code to ask um, questions directly. So then I answer and I say, oh, Philip, you're in row D, seat C, so you were asking me about this, so you have a real conversation and then book signing afterwards. Mm. Thank you for reading my question out. <laughs> 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 um, one of your great mates, uh, coincidentally, happens to be just over there. Um, Clodagh McKenna. How <laughs> lovely is that? <laughs> you are great fun together, the pair of you. We do have some good times together. <laughs> She likes a bit of dancing, does Clodagh. <laughs> she, Richard she... loves a bit of dancing. And you are an amazing cook as well. Yeah. Oh, and so this is from your holiday together, isn't it, here? Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, your, this is your party piece, Clodagh, this. This is Mary. my part. Oh, my God! Her party piece, and I was following her. I... <laughs> oh, and look how you followed. <laughs> <laughs> so good, so good. Well, you're going to be following her right into the kitchen in a minute because you're okay. going to be coming with us. We're making baked eggs. Great. But there's only one problem that you, you're not a massive cheese fan. No, it smells like bum. Right. It smells like... <laughs> Like Tom. So yeah. hold hold the cheese, the please, Loda. Have you got an alternative version? I do have an alternative version because I messaged Richard on the way in today and I was like, I'm making cheesy eggs. I know you don't like cheese. Will you have it? And he was like, no way. It tastes like bum. Oh, God! <laughs> it tastes like bum. It smells like bum. <laughs> it smells like bum. <laughs> it smells like bum. <laughs> said, Sorry. I've not tasted bum. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So far. Oh, well. Oh, well. Smells <laughs> like bum. This is a family like show. Bum. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that was amazing. Well, that was oh. my pocket full of happiness, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is what, this is what we're talking about. Oh, my God. Right, there we go. Thank you. We'll see you in a bit.